today we need to get into Supin crying after another member said something that made him mad. We need to get into Subin being attacked by a Sasing on a plane and even to his home. And then we have Kim kissing a man. So hey dumplings, it's Dave Desai. Hey do not, make sure you subscribe with the notification bell on. Grab your thumbs in, taste filling mug merch, and let's go. TXT members all love each other so much that we are seeing their bromance so much lately and it's actually so cute. It's actually very controversial to do bromance in Korea and for a lot of K-pop groups, while on one hand it's just cute and most people watching are just gonna think it's cute, on the other hand people are going to get upset saying it makes them look gay and saying that it, that's not okay. There's a lot of people from around the world that watch K-pop and even people who believe in more traditional or religious views. And then on the other hand, many K-popies believe that the reason members get so much hate is because of these gay moments. The fandoms get overly passionate about a specific quote unquote couple and then become so die hard of that couple that they send hate to every other member that is not that couple. Of course, labels love the die hard fans which make it easy to overlook some of the more craziness that surrounds them. Die hard fans make it easy for the label and artists to sell things and often a reason why the idols don't speak up about the ships because it helps their career. However, on the flip side, if groups don't show any of these lovey moments, the group will be labeled as having no chemistry and labeled as likely to disband soon. And no one wants to become a fan of a group they know will disband soon. So then we have these cute moments and why they're kept into the behind the scenes clips. But there was a moment in particular that was recently going viral again and people thought it was so cute. This was a moment where Subin was asleep on the couch. He could have likely not actually been asleep but it looked like it was in between shooting or in between something they were doing and Subin was taking a nap. Yeonjun gives Subin a kiss and then Subin gets super flustered after receiving that. Subin ends up touching his cheek on the spot that he was kissed and it's just absolutely hilarious. There's a lot of rumors of if Yeonjun and Subin are dating and if they're gay. I think this is just a fun ship between them and of course they're good friends. I think this concept is very foreign for a lot of people in the US but the shipping and even kisses on the cheek are seen as very normal things in other countries. French people do it all the time. European and Asian people don't do it when they say hello, but they do it to those they're close with. And so in more Western culture, a lot of this stuff is seen as gay, but it's not really. Subin loves to show affection and not only receive kisses, but give kisses. He also has a clip of him kissing his stuffed bunny, Tobin. And I think that's very cute and funny. It shows just how much he loves his stuffed animals. And we all love to see our cute boys next to some cute bunnies. Of course, as we are talking about cute moments within the group, we also have moments within the group that are them getting mad at each other. And there was another moment that was absolutely hilarious when Suman actually did something and it made Huning Kai actually really mad. So what happened and what's going on? If you don't know about ego, this is a term that in K-pop is absolutely hilarious. This is supposed to be a moment where an artist acts cute. So K-pop is specifically notoriously known for this. When idols put their finger on their cheek or draw whiskers on themselves or act like a cat, those things and every artist is either good or bad at. It sort of has died down with the newer artists because these moments are usually frowned upon or looked down upon when K-pop artists do this. It's seen as cringe now instead of cute. However, artists are still always still asked to do this, even grown artists where this image doesn't exactly suit them. For example, Hwasa was believed to be asked to do this recently and Hwasa is an artist that is usually seen as sexy and grown and her audience is meant to be grown. So it'd be very odd for her to join in on this action. So of course, naturally she said no. Whereas in the past, artists couldn't exactly say no to this action. However, Subin was doing Ego recently and it wasn't that he was asked to do this, but he was just doing it anyway. Anyway, to be funny. After he was done, Huning Kai said that after watching that, it actually made him really mad. And I think this is so funny. Huning Kai continued by adding that Subin is indeed very cute, but this was something that made 
tuning mad. And I get it. Don't you ever see something cute but at the same time it annoys you? I think that's a testosterone thing or also known as cute aggression. But apparently Bong Kyu actually thought it was so cute that he wanted to bite Subin and I think that is absolutely hilarious. And I understand both sides of doing ego and also refusing to do it. If you're someone who wants to appeal to fan service or perhaps could have a younger audience, you want to do things that appeal to that younger audience. If you're someone who is looking to branch out more internationally and into the global stage, which unfortunately means they have to market to the US, and this would be seen as something that the US audience, general audience, wouldn't like. And just like ships, Ego is definitely something you have to find the right audience for, and an audience that isn't going to abuse it. Because the effects of Ego is just to be cute for a moment and to entertain. But those who decide to take that moment and use it to be little boys or constantly call them little cute kids tend to be what the problem is. Because when you put someone on a pedestal and constantly keep calling them cute, sweet, innocent little bunnies, you're belittling and emasculating the man. These people are the first to scream issues when the members date, smoke, or worse, if they actually get married. And you'll see who those people are by what they say, which is that they'll put the members in their pocket and carry them with them everywhere, which is so interesting to say. But this also leads to instances where the boys get stalked or hurt and it's because those stalkers get crazy people and don't actually see the TXT boys as human beings but almost like Pokemon or objects to collect. They want to make a scene to get the boys' attention without realizing that the boys are human beings and by doing the stalking it'll actually make said human being very uncomfortable. So what happened recently and when was Subin stalked? Well it's all rumors but I definitely want to talk about it. There was a thread going around where someone was trying to expose this account for being a sasang because they were live posting when they'll meet Subin and how they were stalking him. Going into detail about meeting Subin on the plane and then even after the plane following Subin who then went into Bam Yu's house with Bam Yu's family. And they were believed to have taken photos of the TXC members at the airport. And this is where I find this to be very interesting. Because I'm not exactly sure why these people believe that a person live tweeting about how they're going to violate the law is someone that is actually doing what they're tweeting. Because if you're going to violate the law, you definitely don't want to leave a physical paper trail. I think it's interesting because if you look at every single one of the crazy instances where a stalker attacked a K-pop star, they came out of nowhere. For example, recently V from BTS was stalked in an elevator by a woman who then handed him marriage papers. This wasn't something that was written online as a play-by-play, -play. they just did it. And someone who is actually stalking someone isn't really going to have time to sit there and actually post what they're doing. Let's say they'll get arrested if they sneak into K-pop star's bedroom. They're not going to actively start tweeting, which could potentially lower their guard and they actually get caught in such a high stress, high adrenaline situation, you're not going to be posting a play-by-play -play live, you're just not. I don't ever understand why people believe these accounts are actually real stalkers because the real ones are not online. They're by the idol's home. Sometimes I feel like this is fake activism and activism against fake stalkers. And this is not to say every single time there's a threat or attack online, it isn't real. It's to say that you need to decide what is real and what isn't. If there was indeed someone who was stalking TXT so closely and talking about how close they were to the boys, they would be so easy to arrest that doesn't need to go trending online before one of the TXT members spots the stalker and arrests them. And in a situation where there's a bomb threat or something like that, that needs to be looked into and that needs to have more security because that is a situation where it's hard to ignore. And that's actually just blatantly breaking the law, you can't call in a fake threat that is super violent. In fact, the FBI would have to get involved in such a situation. Now I understand the parallel here. What if the stalker is real and actually is going to hurt the boys? The difference is the boys can visibly see a stalker and then either call out for help or fend for themselves. You can't really see a bomber. And so this is another instance of the boys being able to handle things themselves, but the fans think it's their job to take action. A lot of people in the fandom have a hero complex, so it's very interesting to see. Let me know what you think. Make sure to check out Patreon for more videos. Link down below. Thanks for this lovely comment right here. Love you. Bye.